everybody. In this video, I will show you my high voltage impulse generator powering different loads. And for this, I have the setup like in the previous videos. It's kind of the same. I've added some more cables, but I will not explain because it is all messy around here. Don't mind that, please. <laughs> so we will start with this um, what is it called? A fluorescent light. It's a ring. It's powered with high voltage. And for that, I have my high voltage leads connected. This is our ground potential and our high potential. And my oscilloscope is also connected. It's basically connected at high and low potential. So what we see on our output at the oscilloscope is actually the the power at the load or the voltage at the load. Now let's turn the system on. Yeah. So basically if we increase voltage, amps increase and it's already slightly lit up. As you can see, our output voltage is at around 800 and I can increase it even a bit more to around 900 to 1 kilovolt and it stays stable. And this is still not fully lit up and you can see here, I don't know how good you can see it on the camera, but it is a little purple glowy. It's a, it's a violet glow because the circuit is not fully closed yet. So I have to apply more voltage and I will increase my input. And now this is a certain threshold reached and it will light up fully. And our voltage dropped to around 260 volts. If I increase the voltage even more, it will drop even more. And I will show you the same as I, as I did before, but now I only show you the scope. So I increase the voltage more. Now it's the threshold. Now it got bright, and our voltage dropped. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is a capacitive load. So. There's, uh, if if the uh, if it's not fully lit, it's the circuit is not fully closed, and therefore our voltage stayed high. But as soon as the voltage was high enough, we closed the circuit, and yeah, we are consuming more power. Therefore, the voltage dropped, and we can also. I have an LED ring here. It's made of 34 one watt LEDs. They are connected to a coil, it's a single strand 1.5 millimeter cable, just three windings. And if I put it on my coil stack, first it will induce a voltage and they also light up all of them. They are not fully lit, they are not even half full of it, uh, not even half of that what they can do. And this is also still lit up, of course. And if I remove it, you see the brightness doesn't change very much here. Maybe a slight bit. But these also don't consume very much power right now really doesn't need much power to light up LED slightly. Yeah, this was just to show you that you can just go into the field and <laughs> harvest a bit more of it. Of course, the input will increase or you have to put it in what you will harvest. So let's go to the next step and I will light up this bulb. This is also an interesting one. So for this, I'm going to power it off again and 
try to connect the cables. <laughs> um, nothing happened. It's all fine. Didn't touch the floor. So let me get it sharp. I have connected one side here and with the other one I will touch it here. So I will power it on again. And this is a 42 watt bulb. This will need a bit more power. So yeah, let's stay around here and you see your output. It's around two kilovolts. And now this is the interesting part. I have to make sparks for a certain time. Or I have to hold the spark a certain time. And, uh, like this, and then it will light up. And this is every time. If I can hold the spark for like half a second, then it will light up. I think this has to do with something with my resistance that I have on the gate of my transformer. How easy it is to light this up and it also depends on the input voltage of course and if we have this lit up we see well, you don't see it was at 300 volts believe me I don't want to touch it again so let's step over to our next subject Ooh. I should mount this phone anyway it's way easier, but not now. And then we power it on again. See your power again. Also a little spark, and then it works again. But if I touch it once, this this will light up easy. Zooming. This is our output at load with the small bulb, 600 volts. The bigger bulb was 300. Because this is only 20 watts and this is 42. And as before, I have this. Whoa, it's too bright. I will have to adjust this a bit down, maybe, <laughs> so my LEDs won't get too hot, because when there is no load, the LEDs will get really bright if I go with this much power. So let me see if I still can turn this on with the LEDs attached, yes, works. So now we are at around. 16 volts and 0.65 amps. It's dim compared to the LEDs now, of course. I can increase the power, as you can see. It gets even brighter. Let's take your range is not very far. And now for the final part of this video. I will show you that I can power multiple loads at once. So I will power this incandescent, then a fluorescent and an LED at the same time with, yeah, let's say the same power source. And as you have seen before, they are all quite different in what kind of load they are. There's a low voltage, high voltage, high resistance. So let's turn it on. This is our input, it's around 25 watts. You see, it's bright. This is also. And we have around 250 volts. And now I will add this bulb to the system. 
you can see it's not very bright, but it still lights up. And all of them are lit on this 25 watt input. So I guess it's quite efficient. I think at around 80 to 90 percent. Don't know, I haven't measured the output, but it's interesting to see that you can power loads that are really different in nature. Low voltage LEDs, incandescent bulb in a fluorescent tube. They all share the same signal. Yeah. That's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice day and goodbye.